Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have angle relationships to talk about. Now, in any angle, what we can do is set up a protractor. And by setting up a protractor, it's measured from zero to 180 degrees, and the distance around can be marked off by the various degrees. And so the protractor postulate says that we can use a marked protractor to measure any angle in degrees. Now, we'll talk a little bit about how to use a protractor later, but a protractor postulate simply says we can measure angles. Now, for angle addition, what that says is if I have two various angles, I have 72 and I have 61, angle addition allows me to add various angles together. So I can say angle A, B, C plus angle C, B, D equals angle A, B, D. Now, the nice thing about this is when I combine angle addition with the protractor postulate, I could replace A, B, C with 72 degrees. I could replace C, B, D with 61 degrees allowing me to find whatever total sum I needed. Now, this becomes important because when we talk about the next one, it's called the supplement theorem. The supplement theorem. It says that any two angles, any two angles that form a linear pair add up to 180 degrees. So angle A, B, C, and angle C, B, D have to add up to 180 degrees. Now, let's talk about what a linear pair is. If I start with a straight line, I have a pair of angles that have been created, one angle here, one angle here, and those two form a pair. They make a straight line. If a, two angles make a straight line, then they are called a linear pair, and they are supplementary. So we have supplementary angles that form linear pairs. Now, we also have the complement theorem. The complement theorem is instead of adding up to 180, the complement theorem means any two angles that add up to 90. So the complement theorem is two angles that add up to 90. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. You'll notice this isn't a linear pair because they do not form a straight line. So it's a complement theorem. Add up to 90. Now, we also have reflexive for angles. Reflexive means that angle 1 is congruent to angle one. Or if I have A, B, C, angle, angle A, B, C is congruent to angle A, B, C. That is reflexive. Now, symmetric works in a slightly different way. Symmetric, it says if angle one is congruent to angle two, then angle 2 is congruent to angle 1. This becomes very important because it allows us to move pieces around. Finally, the transitive property, the transitive property for angles says that if I have angle 1 and it's congruent to angle 2, and if I have angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, then I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So angle 1 congruent to angle 2, comma, angle 2 congruent to angle 3. So therefore, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. You're going to have to use all of these properties in turn. Now, if it's a theorem, that means they can actually be proven. Uh, and so if I were to prove that, 
for the symmetric proof, I would say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we say angle 1 congruent to angle 2. That mean, That's given. The measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. And so because if they're congruent, then their measures are equal. That's the definition of congruence. But the nice thing about an equal sign is an equal sign can be turned around. So I can say the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 1 by symmetric property of equality. And then finally, I can go back to saying angle 2 itself is congruent to angle 1 by definition of congruent. So it's just a very quick proof of the symmetric theorem. And that's why it's a theorem, not a postulate because you actually can solve it. Now, congruent supplements theorem. If we want congruent supplements, congruent supplements. Here's how the congruent supplements works. If I take these two lines that cross, do we agree that this is a straight line? Well, if so, that makes this line right here splits this into a linear pair. If this is a linear pair, that means angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 180 degrees by linear pair. Definition of linear pair, linear pair postulate. But the same thing can be said if we go this way. If we have this straight line cut by this angle, we know that angle 1 and angle 3, because they make a straight line, angle 1 plus angle 3 equals 180. And so if those equal 180, that is also by linear pair. The thing about it is, if this bit equals 180, and this bit equals 180, let's rip out the 180 and say... Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals, take out the 180 and plug in angle 1 plus angle 3 by what? Well, anytime I take something out, I put something else back in. That's by substitution. Substitution. Finally, you'll notice there's an angle 1 on both sides. So if I subtract angle 1, subtract angle 1, those are gone, those are gone. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 by subtraction property of equality. And I have now proved that two angles supplementary to the same angle have to be congruent. Two angles supplementary to the same angle have to be congruent. And it does make sense. If I were to give you a numerical proof, if this is 120 degrees, that makes this 60 because they have to add up to 180. But if that's 60, this is 120. So again, they have to add up to 180. But that means this is 120 and this is 120, and they are therefore congruent. So we have that. Now, it works the same way for complements. If I have the following... congruent complements, we have this. That is a right angle. Let's make this a right angle. Now, the nice thing is I have about three angles here. I have angle 1, which is A, B, C. I have angle 2, which is C, B, D. And I have angle 3, which is D, B, E. Well, the thing about it is, angle 1 plus angle 2 equal 90. Angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 90. And these would be, de these would be given, because we said they are right angles. You could also say definition of complementary. 
But now if 1 plus 2 equals 90 and 2 plus 3 equals 90, I can say angle 1 plus angle 2 equals angle 2 plus angle 3 by taking 90 out, putting something else in. And that is going to be substitution. That's going to be by substitution. And now... I have an angle 2 in both places, so if I subtract that off, I have angle 1 is congruent or equal to angle 3 by subtraction property of equality. And so then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by def of congruent. Okay, so we have comp uh, congruent complements theorem. And that should bring us on down to the right angle theorems, and we'll pick that up in a little bit.